Kevin, you write about a lot of different topics, but mm. you cover politics, you cover culture, uh, you cover movements. How would you define the state of the conservative movement right now? Confused. <laughs> um, conservatism always has some difficult to reconcile elements in it because we are not narrow ideologues. You know, it's easy to be a puristic libertarian or a puristic socialist or someone whose main concern in life is just one thing like global warming or income inequality. But if you're a conservative, you're balancing things. You're balancing freedom with stability. You're balancing your desire for a small government with a government that can do things effectively. Uh, your desire for um, America to play its proper role in the world, but also concerns about national defense and the size of the state and all the rest of it. So conservatives are always in the difficult position of having to be the grown-ups in the conversation. <laughs> And I think we just got tired of it, so we decided the last couple of years not to be grown-ups anymore. To heck and, with all uh, that. <laughs> and now there's just this sort of uh, you know temper tantrum going on. Mm -hmm. And I think that... But do you think the temper yeah. tantrum is just among conservatives? Oh, no. It's, uh, there's a bipartisan oh. temper tantrum yeah. going on. A lot of this has to do with the financial crisis of 2008, 2009, and the subsequent bailouts, and the general underperformance of the American economy since then sense of insecurity, uh, perceived loss of prestige in the world, some of those things. So Americans are generally pretty angry right now. We're angry at our institutions. And conservatives have, um, I think, embraced that anger to an unhealthy degree. Uh, you hear a lot of kind of burn it down rhetoric right now. And we'll do X, Y, or Z, because how could things possibly be any worse? And of course, if you're a conservative, there's one thing you know, that things could always things be worse. Things could always get worse. <laughs> things could always get worse. But, but for people who say, you know, look, I want to be motivated, and, mm. and the presidential election even aside, sure, yeah. where where over the last few years should conservatives have gained inspiration? I mean, should they, what's going on in Congress that's inspiring? I mean... Yeah, I think um, no one likes when I, when I talk about this, but um, conservatives have grown impatient. And one of the cardinal virtues of conservatives is patience. Um, not only do things naturally take a long time and the political fr process is always inherently frustrating and slow and iterative and all that, but that's actually how it's supposed to be. Um, conservatives are capable of making errors too. And if you make you know, radical dramatic changes over a very short period of time, you're more likely to inflict that sort of damage on yourself. So there are things we'd like to change. Yes, sometimes it drives you crazy that you can't get rid of the export-import bank or you know, various kinds of corporate subsidies or that you've got you know, presidential candidates and former presidential candidates going out and talking about how sugar protectionism is a national security issue. And you just kind of roll your eyes and go, okay. But you know, we are making you know, small iterative progress on a lot of things, especially at the state and local level. And I think that's important. So where would you tell folks to be optimistic? Well, you know, consider yesterday uh, Nebraska, which has an officially nonpartisan legislature, but is enormously uh, Republican, you know, I think they're two thirds, something mm -hmm. like that. And Republican state government and governor and all that just abolished uh, civil forfeiture. So that's something that a lot of people, not only on the right care about, but you know, libertarians who don't think of themselves as conservatives and also a lot of people on the left really care about that. Uh, you've seen a lot of useful and interesting things going on with criminal justice reform, places like Texas. You know, you've got guys like Rick Perry, who people think of as being you know, Mr. Right Wing, saying, <laughs> well, we can't just put people in prison all the time. There has to be other things we can do about this. Uh, you know, movement on things like marijuana and decriminalization and some of those things. So it's difficult to deal with some of the big financial things in Washington because there's always such a, uh, an interest attached to those things. It's difficult to control that. But in other places, I think you've seen some real progress. And um, the thing the conservatives have to understand is that it's going to take 50 years or 60 years. So stay, stay the course is what you're saying. Well, you know, if you're going to be a conservative, be a conservative. And uh, understand that, you know, you don't get to remake the world tomorrow. And that's something different. So if you want to be a right-wing radical, I guess that's something else you can be. But you're bringing upon yourself and your movement the dangers of radicalism always when doing that. Kevin, always interesting thoughts. Thank Thanks. you.